as if wearing this bulky pressurized spacesuit wasn't a challenge enough. The U-2 has been called a glider on steroids. With a wingspan that reaches 105 feet, pilots will tell you that this makes the aircraft extremely difficult to taxi to and from the runway, especially when it comes to the wheels, or lack of in this case. Now, unlike most aircraft which have the tricycle pattern with three wheels, the U-2 is like this bicycle. It only has two. Now, it would be practically impossible for the U-2 to taxi at low speeds without the weight having to shift and the plane lean on one side. And that's why the U-2 has pogos. And a good way of describing pogos are like huge training wheels for this flying bicycle. And that's where the pogo truck comes in. These airmen follow the U-2 when it taxis, pull out the pogo pens when it's ready for takeoff, and wait. And when the pilot gets clearance from the tower to go, as soon as he goes, he'll get about, usually he'll get about 30 or 40 feet down the runway, and the wings will flex, and these will drop out. And sometimes there's challenges to the challenges. This is a hand launch. When the one wing falls out early, we have to run with the jets to keep the wing off the ground before it takes off. Sometimes uh, if there's not enough fuel or something, then uh, one of the pogos will fall out early while it's sitting on the runway. And then to make sure that the wingtip doesn't hit the ground on takeoff, somebody has to hold it to make sure it doesn't drop and go as far as you can with the wing. And then as soon as it gets out of your hands, just duck and cover and hope you don't get hit by a rock. And after the pogos fall out and the U-2 takes off, these airmen pick up the huge set of training wheels, clean and inspect them, and wait for the U-2 to come back from its mission. When the U-2 comes in to land, the pilot gives his eyes to his wingman, chasing behind him in a Camaro with speeds over 100 miles an hour. What the pilot is trying to do is stall the aircraft at about two feet above the ground. Uh, if he doesn't stall the, the aircraft, it'll be pretty hard to be able to get the aircraft down due to the airfoil, um, the amount of lift that the aircraft is actually uh, producing. So we actually have to stall it two feet above, and uh, my job is to give him advisories and let him know when he's at that two feet. The pogo truck is also back, ready to reinsert the pogos back into the wings. The fuel in each wing determines the balance of the U-2, so when the U-2 stops, the wing with the most fuel will tilt to the ground. The airmen from the pogo truck will have to pull the lighter wing down like a big seesaw in order to reinsert the pogos and let the pilot taxi back to the hangar. Uh, we've got a very important mission out here patrolling the uh, DMZ uh, over the South Korea. Uh, flying the U-2 is a real team effort. Uh, it doesn't happen by just one guy alone. Uh, it's not just the pilot or the ground crew, it's everybody working together. It's obvious that there's a lot of work that goes into the U-2, but when you ask the members of the 5th Reconnaissance Squadron at Osan, the Black Cats will tell you, challenging? Yes. Worth it? Absolutely. I'm Air Force Sergeant Brent Skeen, Osan Air Base, Korea.